So uh, uh, I'm Nobu Yanai from Kyushu University, Japan, and uh, I'm very much happy to share our recent works with you on our uh, works on the uh, Tripet dynamic nuclear polarization. Okay, so uh, actually we are the material chemists and uh, uh, our background is actually nothing related to magnetic resonance, to be honest. So it's maybe not very common in this, you know, maybe community or audience, but we are uh, material chemists making the molecular materials and we are particularly interested in the photo uh, excited uh, molecules in the triplet state because they show the very interesting characteristics like millisecond scale long lifetime and also it can produce the polar spins. So we are trying to explore some new functional chemistry of the triplet state. And it shows the various functions of the triplet state. Actually, triplet is already uh, very much used in the organic LED OLEDs. So it's already commercially available, but we are trying to explore the, you know, new functions or future applications of triplets that includes like photon up conversion and single fission. That's all related to the energy applications and also spin applications like hyperpolarization and quantum sensing. And of course, today I'm going to uh, focus on this uh, DNP and ML applications. So um, maybe to this uh, audience, it's uh, not necessary to show this introduction, but today, uh, just for the general audience, I briefly explain about the uh, problem of magnetic resonance, that's its poor sensitivity. So, you know, the uh, sensitivity or intensity of NMR MRI is proportional to the polarization that's the uh, shown in this uh, you know, equation. Uh, it's uh, proportional to the difference of the up and down spins. So that uh, uh, at the combo, but unfortunately at the like a normal MRI condition, like three Tesla at room temperature for the proton polarization is only 0.001%. It's almost canceled out. So it's quite, uh, sensitivity becomes quite poor. So that uh, uh, there is a very, um, the great technique that's called the dynamic nuclear polarization, DNP or hyperpolarization to increase the you know, polarization of the nuclear spins to increase the sensitivity of NMR and MRI. And uh, perhaps the most, um, the, the, the successful and uh, powerful technique so far is the dissolution DNP, DDNP, that utilized uh, free uh, electrons at a very low temperature so that in the, uh, in the thermal equilibrium Boltzmann distribution, this electron can give the very high polarization. And then you, uh, by shining the microwave, you can transfer the polarization from the electron to eventually some nuclear spin of your target compound. And then after dissolving it, uh, you inject into human and you can monitor uh, the real time metabolic events in MRI. So that's quite useful for the cancer imaging and it's under clinical trials. So uh, it's a very uh, powerful and method, uh, but uh, still, there are some limitations, like uh, it's limited to some uh, small compounds with long T1 spin lattice regression time. But uh, for example, uh, some researchers like uh, Professor Sando in, at the University of Tokyo uh, developing the new molecular probes with extremely long uh, relaxation time T1. That's also a very interesting approach. But uh, nevertheless, still the, uh, the very big challenge is that you need a very low temperature at one Kelvin. So that makes the, you know, the instrument expensive and also not easy to handle. So the, uh, so to avoid such, you know, low temperature problem. So, uh, people, uh, in this community, uh, trying to develop the room temperature DNP mechanism methods. So if you can achieve very, uh, highly efficient room temperature DNP, uh, you can achieve like a cheap and compact dissolution DNP setup or continuous DNP because it can work at room temperature and eventually uh, in vivo DNP, it's a kind of, you know, ultimate goal. 
So um, there are several mechanisms of this room temperature DNP. And uh, today I don't have enough time to you know, overview these mechanisms. So I should just defer to this uh, wonderful review just published recently in chemical reviews that uh, includes all kinds of DNP, of course, uh, not only room temperature, but also the low temperature DNP. For the, for the room temperature DNP, you can find some examples like Oberhauser DNP or parahydrogen induced DNP or Sabre or NV center and kidney. But today I'm going to you know, uh, focus on one specific uh, type of the DNP that is the triplet DNP. Okay, so triplet DNP uh, uses the the highly polarized photo excited triplet. So, and then by uh, using the uh, you know triplet state as a polarizing agent, so Venkubacher and workers achieved the first results of room temperature DNP over enhancement of five thousand uh, five hundred times. That's you know uh, higher than the six hundred sixty times. Uh, the maximum achievable with, uh, you know, free electron spins. So that it was published in 1990. And after that, uh, uh, several groups uh, ex uh, developed more uh, optimized conditions uh, to have even higher uh, efficient, higher enhancement with stupid DNP. So they optimized like uh, concentration, like sample condition and uh, laser excitation and also microwave radiation conditions. So that eventually, um, like uh, by using the pentacene doped in naphthalene crystal, so pentacene uh, becomes a triplet and uh, naphthalene is the host crystal. And, you know, na naphthalene, two naphthalene Morocco have the similar size and shape of the pentacene. So pentacene can be doped in naphthalene crystal. So by doing so, the Takeda and co-workers achieved 70% of the polarization at 100 Kelvin, 5 Kelvin. And how and co-workers reported 80% at 25 Kelvin, very high polarization. And later, uh, by changing the naphthalene to tafenil for the host crystal, the Negolo and co-workers uh, achieved 34% uh, high polarization, even at room temperature because of the higher stability of this, you know, part of any host crystal. Okay, so then, next, let me show you the mechanism of this stupid DNP. So by shining the light, you produce the polarized electron spins and then applying the microwave, transfer the, this electron polarization to the nuclear spins. And the nuclear spins just, you know, diffuse in the solid uh, material. So by repeating this, shining the light and microwave, shining the light and the microwave, uh, you can you know, accumulate uh, the spin polarization in the system. So I know this is very much or maybe too much, you know, simplified uh, movie uh, for you NMR experts, but uh, can be uh, maybe useful for the general uh, audience. So, um, so, and then key here is to utilize the, you know, polarized triplet state uh, that is in the non-equilibrium state so that the, you can, you know, produce the very high polarization even at room temperature. No, you don't need a very low temperature. It's almost temperature independent, basically. So the most typical uh, polarizing agent is pentacene. So, you know, in the first report of Vancouver Hertz group also use, uses this pentacene. So, uh, but later I will show you non-pentacene new polarizing agent, but uh, let me first explain with pentacene. So the pentacene absorbs the light and it undergoes interstitial crossing to become the you know, triplet state. And in this uh, interstitial crossing, uh, it, it's actually the spin sub-level selective. So it selectively populate one of the three sub-levels. And then, uh, then polarization is over 70%, it's very high. And the pentacene uh, not only shows such a high polarization and also actually efficient, uh, relatively efficient interstitial crossing, it also shows a uh, very long polarization lifetime over like tens of microseconds, so that it's quite long enough to transfer the polarization to the nuclear spins. So then uh, for the polarization transfer, 
uh, so far the solid effect uh, have been has been mainly used. So it uh, utilizes the the hartmann hahn matching condition between proton and the electron. So by applying the microwave uh, resonant to electron spins. So now you can, and then by uh, applying the enough strength of the microwave, you can control and match the lambda frequency of the electron spins in the rotating frame to the um, lambda frequency of protons in the laboratory frame. But uh, so this is, you know, so-called Hartmann-Hahn matching condition. But the, the problem with TRIPET is it's a very broad uh, EPL spectrum. So this is the uh, EPL spectrum of pentacene doped in platophenyl at X band. So uh, it's very much broadened by the hyperfine coupling with protons in the pentacene, and also by the different orientation when you use the you know powder or randomly oriented sample. So the the, the most the strongest peak uh, you can detect from the x-axis so that's the long uh, molecular axis of this pentacene but it's broadened and also you find other orientation like y or z uh, directions and so on so it's very much broadened and much broader than the lama frequency of proton at this the same magnetic field of expand so unfortunately you can you know use only very limited part of the electron spin packets for the polarization transfer so um, to circumvent this problem, uh, in 1990, when Cooper Hertz's first paper uh, developed uh, this integrated solid effect, ISE. So here uh, they they you implement they introduce this field, magnetic field sweep, so that it's kind of they uh, you can scan the you know EPL spectrum and to harvest. Uh, more uh, spin packets. So actually here shows our own setup at Kyushu, but it was mainly uh, developed by our collaborator, Tatesh and Wesak at Riken. So uh, here is our electromagnet and you can find, uh, you can see the microwave resonator here. And just above the resonator, there's NMR coil. And we shine the light uh, from the back and then apply the mic microwave from the front. Then, uh, so here shows the, the triple DNP uh, scheme. We typically use the 0.67 uh, tesla. It's a bit higher. It's about the double of the magnetic field and the expand uh, to uh, have the, the long T1, proton T1. And then uh, we first we shine the laser, green laser, uh, typically like a, one kilohertz or like 0.5 kilohertz. Then uh, uh, actually the it's have a unusually long pulse width. So usually, you know, laser pulse width is very short, like nanosecond or even shorter, but uh, this laser have the very long pulse width, like 100 or 200 nanoseconds. Actually, this is optimized uh, length of the laser because uh, uh, actually not you know, after photo excited, only in case of pentacene, about 60% goes to Jupiter, but 40% goes back to the ground state. So, but uh, if the pulse width of laser is long enough, you can, you know, excite this again, then goes to the, you know, the induce them to go to the, you know, Jupiter state. And then you can repeat it several times within this uh, 100 or 200 nanosecond of the pulse. So that you can basically uh, make most of the trip Monaco, the chromophore dyes to the triple state. Then uh, you make enough amount of triple state, then apply the microwave uh, for the during the, you know, the, the, the uh, spin satisfaction time of the triple electron spins. And during this microwave, uh, you apply the microwave, uh, magnetic field sweep of about 10 milli Tesla. Then uh, we repeat it, then measure NMR. So this is the movie of our actual instrument. So before DNP, this is FID and NMR signal. So there is almost no signal. And here's our electromagnet and here's our resonator. And then NMR coil just above the resonator. And this is our sample, pentacene doped in platophenyl 
So this is model sample at room temperature. Then we insert the sample. Actually, this is in, now in capillary. Then we start uh, the tupidinb sequence. So now you see the green laser. Actually, it's coming from the back and looks continuous but um, to our eye, but it's actually one about one kilohertz of repetition. And uh, after pulse laser, microwave is irradiated and laser microwave irradiation is repeated for like 20 seconds or so. Then move the sample to the NMO coil and detect the NMO signal. So now uh, it's FID and NMO signal. So it's obviously very much enhanced compared with uh, the signal before the DNP. Okay, so so far I basically overviewed the mechanism of the tube DNP. So that the uh, so the tube DNP works great. So uh, gives can give you the very high polarization even at room temperature, but you need uh, the very big chunk of single crystal, like centimeter scale, and you need to, uh, you know, align the pentasen, uh, the, the crystal to the uh, magnetic field to have the, you know, narrow EPL and then have a high polarization. So that kind of, you know, the big single crystal is uh, already useful for the physics applications like neutron scattering, but it's not easy to, you know, implement for the biological applications. So uh, we are actually materials chemist. So our concept is to introduce this, you know, kind of physics of tube DNP. Uh, we introduce the materials chemistry to this tube DNP field to uh, make a, a new way toward the uh, biological applications. So, so far we have developed a new polarizing agent that can be directly doped in the biological matrices. And also we developed the uh, uh, nanomaterials with large surface area for the polarization transfer the target compounds. So before going to our uh, own work, so I wanna highlight two very important work in this uh, field. So that the Negoro's group reported the uh, first example of dissolution to DNP. So they used the benzoic acid as a host crystal and doped the pentasin. So now, you know, this hydrogen bonded benzoic acid dimer have the similar size and shape of this pentasin. So uh, pentasin can be doped and the uh, uh, benzoic acid can be dissolved in water. So after to DNP, they dissolve it in water and they also have a very strong signal. And then later, the Econ and coworkers reported uh, again to dissolution to DNP, but different strategy. So they first uh, uh, hyperpolarized the naphthalene to the very high polarization, then dissolve in the organic solvents in very high concentration, so that they could have a nice, uh, very efficient NOE to various different type of the small compounds. So that it's uh, it's very useful, powerful, and general method for in in especially in the organic solvents. Okay, so these are the very uh, important advancements in this field, but uh, still there is a limitation, like some, it's limited to some very specific host crystals, or it's still uh, limited in the organic solution system with very high concentration of naphthalene. And also, you know, the very important uh, actual target is still missing, that is the pyruvate. So as you know, that pyruvate is a very, go very much golden standard in this DNP, field and it's already uh, on the clinical trial so that uh, we want to hyperpolarize this pyruvate by using triplet DNP but that's not very easy because we of you know in this field uh, polarizing agent it's a bit of the pentasin is what has been the only polarizing agent it's very much you know hydrophobic so it can be miscible with pyruvate very much aggregate and then you lose the polarization very easily so uh, we, the chemists, uh, can come into play so that we develop the new polarizing agent, uh, still pentasin derivative, but having the carboxylate moieties to make it water soluble. And actually this compound, sodium PDBA we call, is water soluble, but actually, but unfortunately it's aggregate uh, in the presence of high concentration of sodium pyruvate. So this is very much polar, you know, compound. It induced aggregation of this compound, the pentasin derivative. So that we 
uh, introduce the host uh, compound. So we use the supramolecular chemistry approach. That this beta cyclodextrin, this is a very safe, biologically safe compound. And then it's very famous host compound. It, uh, so it can accommodate many, you know, different type of hydrophobic uh, compound in this hydrophobic uh, pores, uh, inner pore. So the, by just mixing this beta cyclodextrin, so it can accommodate and you know, disperse this uh, sodium PDBA uh, even in the very high concentration of the sodium pyruvate. Okay, so that the, here is the MD simulation results of the supramolecular complex, and it shows the one to two uh, the complex and to the both end of the you know the sodium PDBA is capped with beta cyclodextrin. And we confirm this structure by different uh, experimental techniques. And uh, actually without the cyclodextrin, as I mentioned, uh, when we add a very high concentration of the uh, sodium pyruvate of 1.5 molar, so PDBA, you know, pentacin aggregates and it shows no EPL emission, uh, EPL, uh, spectra signal so that uh, then but in the presence of the beta cyclodextrin we could nicely observe the EPL uh, signal Tip the spectral shape is quite uh, characteristic for the typical for the the pentacent triplet and polarization you know decay the spin lattice duration time is long enough so that we apply the tube in B sequence so laser and microwave radiation and then uh, we first transfer the polarization from the triplet electron to the protons. Then we apply the cross polarization from proton to carbosatin. Then uh, eventually we could observe the enhanced signal of carbosatin. So it's still modulate, but it's over, over 100, but still modulate, but uh, it's a kind of very much encouraging result. That's the you know, first example of triplet DNP of the pyruvate. So this has achieved a very uh, uh, good compatibility of this, you know, the supramolecular complex in the very polar matrix. And then I want to show you another related uh, system. So uh, it's a kind of interesting polarizing agent that is quintet state. So as you may know that the, when the some molecule like a pentacin aggregate it shows the single fission process. So aggregation is not always a bad thing, so sometimes it's good. So uh, single fission is the process that makes the two triplets out of one singlet. So, and then uh, and in the, as an intermediate, uh, it forms the triplet pair state. So first the singlet becomes the singlet triplet pair state, and it's very fast process because it's being allowed. And then it, uh, and there goes the spin conversion to the quintet TT pair. So here, the two triplets, uh, sorry, the uh, entangled and uh, form the uh, quintet triplet pair states, and then eventually it separates. But uh, this quintet pair state is very, can be also very uh, interesting and uh, good uh, polarizing agent. So the EPL spectra of this quintet TT uh, TT pair was first observed in 2017 by two different groups independently. And they observed the quintet signal with the uh, narrower reduced than typical triplets. And this actually uh, quintet uh, state uh, can, the sub uh, sp some specific sub level of quintet state can be selectively populated like Q0. So that it can be, you know, useful for the uh, polarizing agents. So, that, so we uh, try to make such a, you know, pentacin aggregate, especially pentacin dimer, in the uh, biological relevant condition. That's water glycerol, very typical, the most typical, you know, the solvents in this DNP. So. Actually, without uh, cyclodextrin, this compound just uh, slightly aggregate to form the dimer in the water glycerol. But when we use the gamma cyclodextrin, we can uh, even control this uh, dimer uh, formation, and we can change the structure a little bit. So that uh, actually, 
compared with previous beta cyclodextrin, this gamma cyclodextrin have a, a larger pore, so it can accommodate two pentasin within this hydrophobic cavity. So we can selectively form the dimer in the water or water glycerol mixture. So then uh, from the outer first transient absorption measurement, we confirm that it undergoes the very fast singlet fission process uh, in the picosecond time scale. So it should form the first uh, uh, the, the singlet TTP state. And then we measure the transient EPL and we observe the quintet EPL signal in the microsecond time scale. So actually, uh, this uh, this is the simulated EPL spectrum, and uh, this peak, uh, this quintet peak, is mainly comes from the Q0 to Q1 absorption. So uh, actually, besides the Q0, in this case Q plus two and minus two was also uh, populated, but by uh, choosing the micro uh, magnetic field uh, of this peak, so you can selectively utilize this Q0, Q1 absorption. So uh, by setting the magnetic field at this uh, point, we apply the DNP, so it's uh, now the quintet DNP. So uh, still modulate, but uh, we observed a kind of nice enhancement of the NMR signal, or uh, proton NMO or water. And uh, actually there is one interesting uh, feature of this quintet. So actually you know that the Lavi frequency is proportional to the uh, this equation that includes the spin multiplicity. So the larger spin multiplicity uh, can give you the you know the chance to do the DNP at the lower uh, microwave power. So actually, as predicted from this uh, relationship, we observed the, the lower uh, maximum. So, so this is the uh, NM, enhanced NMR signal intensity against the microwave power. So the, for, with the quintet, we observed the uh, maximum enhancement at the lower microwave power. So, so in this work, we utilized the single fission derived quintet state as a unique polarizing agent. And also we show the you know, advantage of the quintet compared with the triplet that is the less microwave power. Okay, so, um, but so far I uh, introduced like a hydrophilic or water dispersible pentasing or supermarket complex, but still, you know, it's pentasing and also uh, actually the performance is not going beyond the pentasin. Of course, in water, it's, uh, you know, pentasin cannot be used. So in that sense, it's, you know, uh, uh, can be better than pentasin, but uh, in the essential performance is kind of similar to pentasin. So we want, but uh, as a, you know, material chemist, we want to make the even better one. So let me go back to the requirements for the polarizing agent. So it should show the efficient intersystem crossing in the first place, and then it should, give, it should show the high polarization and long polarization. So actually pentasin can give the very good efficiency and long polarization, but it's not perfect. So actually it's uh, uh, related to the widths of the ESR spectra. So as I mentioned, uh, in the random orientation, so the 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 Morocco, if the Morocco is under the random orientation against the magnetic field, the ESL is very much broadened. So you can use only limited part, and then but still you even if you use the magnetic field sweep, you can only sweep the limited range. So you lose a lot. So basically, you want to make this EPL much sharper to make more you know spin packets within the your uh magnetic field sweep range. So this width of the Jupiter EP EPL is uh, defined by the, characterized by two um, zero feed magnet, um, uh, zero feed splitting parameters. So it's D and E. So D represents the spreads of the electron distribution and E uh, related to the uh, anisotropy of the electron distribution. So, Basically, um, if we, you know, broaden the electron spin distribution and reduce the uh, in 
uh, reduced anisotropy, so it make it more isotropic, so that uh, we should be able to, you know, make it sharper. So by the way, we really need, we really want to make the, you know, nice to be DNP with the random orientation because it's more, um, you know, technologically relevant and uh, much easier for everyone to make the amorphous uh, system. So that we, with this idea, uh, we made a new polarizing agent, still pentacin derivative, but it's uh, now it's, the, we modify the channel group to the pentacin, di channel pentacin DTP. So this DTP shows the very uh, much sharper ESL spectrum and also stronger uh, intensity than pentacin. And uh, we, then, so now we have more electron spin packets in the our you know magnetic field sweep range that's about what, ten millitesla. So we tested in the uh, typical uh, auto tau matrix. So pentacin can give the 0.2 percent, but this the DTP can give the four times larger uh, enhance the polarization 0.8 percent. And when we use the partially deuterated matrix we could achieve the 7.5%. That's the actually highest uh, polarization so far achieved with the triple TNP in the amorphous systems. So, but we wanted to understand more why this compound shows such a you know, narrow ESL. So that uh, we collaborated with the Yuki Kurashi group at Kyoto University to do the uh, quantum chemical calculations. Then uh, uh, we uh, did this pen, we calculated the uh, intersystem crossing and also the uh, zero field splitting parameter. So then uh, this pentacin shows the, for the intersystem crossing. So pentacin shows the X uh, polarization with this uh, value. But uh, uh, this the new derivative shows the interestingly Y polarization and higher polarization. So to understand this, we uh, checked the vibronic mode because the, this vibronic motion uh, drives the or determines the selectivity of this uh, uh, sublevel uh, selective population. So in case of pentacin, you find as you see this type of mode is exists and that makes the X band uh, X population. So in this uh, our new uh, derivative DBTP, uh, it also show the similar mode, but uh, it shows the additional new mode that uh, comes from the, the substituents. So this uh, gives this Y polarization and the even higher polarization. Okay, so that's the time maybe. And uh, uh, D value is uh, also expected as expected. So D value becomes uh, uh, smaller by the uh, more, um, distribution of the electron spins to the substituents. So actually we learned a very much uh, good direction and uh, uh, now it's uh, possible to simultaneously control this polarization, spin orbit coupling and zero field splitting because that comes from the different interaction that spin orbit coupling and also spin spin interactions. So we can independently control these two important parameters. Okay, so then uh, let me uh, show you other uh, polarizing agents that uh, pentacin has been the, so far the, you know, only polarizing agent from the first example of the two billion P at room temperature. But recently we developed the new polarizing agents. That's the uh, air stable one because pentacin is quite unstable in air. It uh, degrades within a few minutes uh, in solution, but uh, diaza, uh, like uh, compounds can show very high stability. And also we developed a water stable and biocompatible processing agents. So our strategy is very simple to make the you know, air stable processing agents because uh, the poor stability comes from the oxidation. So to avoid oxidation, we introduce the electron withdrawing substitution and to uh, decrease the HOMO and LUMO to suppress the photo oxidation and the reaction with singlet oxygen. So basically uh, this, with this strategy, we could enhance the stability very much, but the performance was very much uh, 
very re retained so that the, they show the similar you know, polarization, similar performance to the pentasin in the model product of any matrix. So actually, um, this polarizing agent, this one, diazotetracin, shows the not only air stability, but also good solubility in the organic solvents. That's also very important. You know, pentasin is poorly soluble in the uh, the organic solvents, but this DAT is very soluble in the organic solvents. So, you know, without with this solubility, we can you know expand our uh, applications. So one of that, so that we could you know uh, use the nanomaterials with these new polarizing agents. So we developed the first nanoporous uh, matrix for the polarization transfer. So we first transfer the polarization to this nanoporous material and then uh, pass the polarization to our guest target compound. So uh, we you, uh, pick up this uh, fluorouracil uh, as a target molecule because this is important anti-cancer track and also it has a fluorine so it's very uh, useful for the NMR detection. So the previously uh, people reported the fluorouracil DN, uh, fluorine DNP of this fluorouracil in the glass matrix but uh, to stop the motion of the molecules uh, they need to use the low temperature but with this nanoporous material we can strongly bind to this fluorouracil and stop the motion so we can achieve the DNP even at room temperature. And actually some, uh, we employ the nanoporous metal organic framework composed of metal ion and organic ligands, and some morph shows the flexibility. So it ch flexibility changed the crystal structure and fit the target molecule. So it can be used, it's very useful to stop the motion of this target compound, and that's necessary for the polarization transfer. So that we employ the typical uh, flexible morph and they introduce the DAT of a new polarizing agent that is actually soluble in organic solvents. So very easy to you know, introduce. So just soak this uh, morph in the solution of this polarizing agent. Then we introduce, then we uh, uh, put more uh, target compounds, about 40%, 48% into these pores. So from X-ray diffraction, we uh, could confirm that now the the you know host molecule uh, host uh, structure fit to this guest molecule by changing its uh, pore structure. So that we apply the triplet DNP sequence to first polarization transfer from the proton, and then first proton, then to the fluorine by the CP. Eventually, we could uh, see. Uh, still modest, but we could see the the enhancement of the flooring, even at room temperature, by stopping the motion of the target compound in the morph. So, um, and then uh, I want to show you another example of nanomaterials that is nanocrystals. So, nanocrystals have a, again the large surface area, but so the, and also it can be dispersed in water. So we expect it to to transfer the polarization from the crystal, the solid, to the water, directly to liquid water, not the solid water, the frozen water. So in the beginning, we used the pentasin, so we could not use the solution-based method. So we used the top-down method, that's the ball meeting. So in this case, uh, we could disperse the nanocrystal in water, and we could do the tube DNP of nanocrystals, the solid nanocrystals, but not uh, polarization transfer to the water. So in this case, we suspected that we needed to use the surfactant to uh, make the nanocrystals by ball meeting. So this surfactant have very short T1, so it may you know hinder polarization transfer. So that we use the different technique that is deep, re deep precipitation method. So now we have the, the you know the new polarizing agent with good solubility, DAT, so we can use the solution method. So we dissolve them and they inject into water to make the nanocrystal. So we could make the nanocrystal without the surfactants. 
And by changing the condition, we can also change, control the you know, size of the nanocrystal. And then we apply the tubetin P. So before and after tubetin P, this is NMR signal. So that uh, before the tubetin P, you see only the water signal. And after tubetin P, you see the broad uh, NMR peak. This is coming from the, uh, the solid nanocrystal. But uh, so besides this you know, solid uh, peak, you see that the water peak also shows some enhancement. When we extract this water peak, it uh, shows the clear enhancement. I should say this is very, very moderate, very, I would say small polarization enhancement, but this is actually the enhancement of liquid water. So, and then uh, we try to understand the mechanism. So by changing the, the crystal size, make it smaller, increase the enhancement. So the larger surface area uh, should be better for the polarization transfer. And we observe the positive enhancement that is telling us it's a zero quantum uh, cross reduction. It's like a solid uh, type mechanism, not the Oberhauser type uh, solution type uh, system. And from the build up, basically the water build up follows the nanocrystal build up, and it's longer than the water T1. So, so the polarization transfer should happen from the nanocrystal to the water. And we uh, mod, uh, we simulate uh, the model of this system by using this, you know, zero quantum uh, cross reduction. The, we use the cross reduction, and uh, we could uh, fit this uh, yeah, build up uh, curve. So from all these um, results, we concluded that now the mechanism is like shown here. So first, the polarization is transferred a nuclear spin within the nanocrystal. And then this uh, polarization diffuses to the solid liquid interface and passed to the water protons. But this water should be absorbed strongly at the surface and because it's like a solid type mechanism. Then uh, this water proton may be exchanged with the bulk water and then diffuse. So this type of, you know, the polarization relay from the solid to the interface, then to the bulk liquid uh, should uh, take place in this uh, polarization enhancement of bulk water. So this is still uh, modulate, very small, but um, now we show that it's still possible to transfer the polarization from the solid to, di to directly to the liquid. So it can be useful not only for this in you know, NP, but also for other solid polarizing agents like uh, NB center. So, um, so this is indirect polarization transfer, but now we are recently trying to uh, transfer direct polarization transfer from the chromophore to the some Morocco in solution. But that's very challenging because usually in solution, Morocco you know, rotate and they, they easily lose the polarization. So we need to stop the motion. So we used actually the solid to liquid interface. So the chromophore is attached to the solid. So it, the motion is very much suppressed, but it exposed to the, uh, you know, the solution. So it can interact with the Morocco in solution. So the system is very simple. Uh, porphyrin absorbed on the surface of the amino silica gel. So this has a nanopore. So it it can porphyrin can be absorbed not only outer surface but also inner nanopores of this silica gel. And this porphyrin, uh, this is the EPL spectra of porphyrin in the glass matrix, solid glass, or at the interface. So as you see, it's quite similar, right? So that the uh, now it's, you know, porphyrin, even it's exposed to the liquid solution, but it behaves as a solid, at least in the, you know, EPL time scale. And for, but from the, uh, the spin lattice degradation time, the, it's a bit shorter than the, at the interface is, uh, it's shorter than that in the solution, uh, in the, in the solid. So that is reasonable because it has some residual mo molecular motion at the solid liquid interface, but still it's long enough. So that we tested whether it's actually in, it can actually interact with the Morocco in solution. So we add some probe, it's a tempo. And uh, actually tempo can uh, 
get the polarization from the porphyrin, so it shows the negative polarization here. So now we expect that the, from this, uh, the similar decay uh, constant between this triplet and uh, tempo, we assume that it's now uh, the uh, ectospin polarization transfer is happening at the interface ESPT. So, but anyway, the, our purpose here is not to get a very high polarization. Our purpose here is to prove that actually the, the you know, the chromophore at the solid liquid interface can interact, is exposed to the uh, solution and it can interact with the molecule in solution. So we hope that this is, can be useful eventually for the polarization of the liquid directory. Okay, so with that, I, today I showed you uh, some of our um, the developments on this stupid DNP, and also uh, I showed you some uh, the mechanism and bit history of stupid DNP, so that we developed the new polarizing agents and also new nanomaterials to uh, expand the application of the stupid DNP towards the biology relevant compounds like pyruvate uh, or water or drug compounds or even liquid water. So uh, still it's on the way uh, to improve the system, but uh, we, uh, we imagine, we hope that we can get a continuous triple DNP and eventually ultimately in vivo triple DNP by uh, developing our uh, new materials. Okay, so with that, I wanna thank all my uh, lab members, group members, and also wonderful collaborators. So Dr. Tomohiro Uesaka Riken for the, and uh, Kensho Tadeshi for the DNP setup, and Yusuke Nishiyama at Riken Geo for solid state NMR characterization, and Kiyoshi Miyata and Ken Onda at Kyushu University for the transient absorption measurements, and Go Watanabe at Kitasato University for the MD simulation, and Yuki Kurashige at Kyoto University for the quantum chemical calculations, and Yasiro Kobori at Kobe University for the ESL simulations I showed today. And I want to thank all the funding agency, JST Presto Forest and JSPS for supporting our projects. And thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, Nobu. That was really wonderful talk. You showed a lot of different smart ideas how to, how to implement. Uh, triplet DNP, how to expand its boundary towards room temperature. We already have a couple of questions. So there's a question by Gabriel uh, Stevanto. He has actually two questions. So I'll ask one by one. The first question is, what's the magnetic field dependence of hyperpolarized triplet formation? Okay. So um, it's a... Uh not very much dependent on the magnetic field. It really depends on the molecular um, property. So the, because magnetic field is very small, so it doesn't change between like a zero field and uh, our in expand or below one Tesla, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the second question he has, uh, since we can't uh, incorporate all the electron spins at higher field, so he's asking if you shine light at lower field, maybe at X band, could you sweep uh, a larger, the EPR frequency more efficiently? Could you incorporate mm. more number of electron spins? Uh, will that uh, have an advantage to be at lower field? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so it's a, a very important point. And then at, at this moment, we use, we use the um, traditional, <laughs> Uh, integrated solid effect that's you know we can scan only like 10 millitesla or so but uh, as a, I, I also discussed with a shift that we can maybe come up with much you know better ideas to maybe sweep the magnetic uh, the maybe the um, microwave and then uh, harvest more triplet ecton spins that's uh, under investigation but uh, at, yeah so far we haven't tried it but uh, because people Previously, use you know, magnet uh, aligned single crystal. So in that case, integrated solid effect was uh, enough. But you don't want to use the you know very much 
align the single crystal for the biological application. So, so that we really need now to develop the, maybe the better methods that's, uh, uh, at this moment, I don't have the very clear answer, but hopefully we can have it quite soon. Okay. Uh, there is another question by Daniela, and he's asking what's the maximum theoretical polarization that can be achieved and uh, of electron spins in tempo by transferring polarization from the triplets. So is there a limit? Uh, is it something that we can quantify how much polarization can be transferred from triplet to a stable radical? Okay, okay. Uh, so first uh, question is uh, so, uh, polarization. Ah, okay, so it's a question about the uh, tempo, right? Yeah. It Not is a question about, yes, that we tempo. can transfer to the tempo. Okay. Yeah. So at this moment, it's um, uh, uh, not very efficient, I should say, because uh, uh, now it depends on the ESPT mechanism so that the net polarization of the triplet is transferred. But unfortunately, net polarization of triplet is not very high. So it's mostly canceled out. So it's, you know, as you see, the, the EPL spectrum is symmetric so that the net polarization, it's not zero, but it's very small. So, but uh, recently, uh, there are some other methods uh, like RTPM or RQM. So by more controlling the uh, interaction between the uh, triplet and tempo, it should uh, basically, we can quench, uh, basically we can, we should be able to utilize uh, all the triplet uh, Actions to make the radical polarization. So the large polarization should be able to achieve by the uh, more modern, um, you know, the kind of conjugation between the uh, triplet and temp, the radical. Okay. Uh, I have a question actually. I saw your nature communication paper. It's really okay. wonderful. So, Thank you. Um, how, what would be uh, uh, if we have to think and propose things for future? Is it mm -hmm. a quintet system which would be better or a triplet system for hyperpolarization? They have their own advantages. You showed microwave power required for quintet is lower. The effective yeah. is faster. But you yeah. uh, have to consider the lifetime of the quintet and the net mm. spin polarization. So if you, if you compare all the factors, is it triplet or quintet or some higher spin quantum state which is better for spin hyperpolarization? Yeah, that's a yeah very important point. And yeah, actually, to be honest, at this moment, it's not very easy to go beyond the triplets um, because uh, uh, actually, I now it uh, populates not only the um, Q zero but also Q two and Q minus two. So we need uh, to, uh, but it's possible to. Uh, selectively populate a Q0, but that requires the uh, control of the orientation of the Monaco against the magnetic field. So when it completely, you know, oriented, it's possible to uh, selectively populate the Q0. So theoretically, uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, possible. It, it, it is possible to have the very high polarization close to 100%. Uh, so in terms of polarization, it can be very high, but the uh, spin lattice regression time is uh, another challenge <laughs> because uh, in in this system, uh, actually quintet can also, um, or TT pair can be quenched to the ground state. So there is a, you know, uh, deactivation channel. So the it's different from the triplet because triplet to ground state is spin forbidden, but uh, in the TT pair, it can also take the singlet state and single TT, and that has the, uh, you know, deactivation channel. So that uh, in terms of spin lattice deactivation time, it's kind of challenging, but uh, in terms of polarization and the microwave power, it has some, it can be, has some advantage, yeah. Okay, no, thank you for the answer. Uh, there is a question by Amrit Venkatesh, and that is about uh, transferring this technique to higher field. So his question is, what challenges do you anticipate to transfer polarization to liquids at higher magnetic field, say around nine Tesla? Oh, so this is a question in the chat. Okay, okay. 
Um, yeah. Um, the challenge is the, you know, the microwave, um, the power, I think, so that the simply we, um, simply we don't have the such, you know, strong, uh, microwave source at the high field. But, uh, uh, I think it's, uh, uh, if you have the gyrotron and st strong enough, uh, microwave source, maybe it's, uh, can be possible. So in that case, but the, when you use the, uh, high magnetic field, now you cannot use, you know, uh, magnetic field sweep so that, uh, you really need the microwave, uh, frequency sweep. So mm -hmm. that, uh, but the, by, uh, integrating, by developing such, you know, uh, technique and combine them, the, it, in principle, I think it should be uh, possible to do the Jupiter NP at high field. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and we don't have the, yeah. Do you yeah, see a possibility of an alternate uh, pathway like photoactivation and then mm -hmm. cross relaxation directly to the nuclei? Like it's more like overhauser effect of hyperpolarized electron spins. Could it be a pathway for hyperpolarization at higher field? Uh, could you say that again? So we can hyperpolarize electron spins. Yeah, yeah. We can cross relax through nuclear mm -hmm. spin. Mm, yeah, yeah. And hyperpolarize the nucleus. Yeah. Spin. Yeah, yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a, yeah. Definitely interesting. And, uh, I'm very also interested in that direction. So, yeah. So we, we can, um, use, use some anastropy and we can match one of the two bit, uh, peak to the, uh, such, you know, cross relaxation, uh, cross, mm, cross relaxation, uh, condition so that, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, so that the result, yeah, using the microwave, uh, it should be also uh, possible to transfer the polarization so that, uh, it's, it's going to be very, very useful method. And then the very big advantage of tripet is the, it's a polarization is independent of temperature. That's very different from the, you know, electro spin based DNP so that uh, you can, uh, maybe you can uh, achieve the very high uh, polarization even at very high temperature that is difficult to achieve with conventional you know the dnp so that's mm -hmm. the, that yeah that's that's a i think that's a there is a very uh, big opportunity with uh, such you know the yeah new Just new solid the dnm technique yeah from the chat conversation uh, like between mm -hmm. chris and gabriel it seems uh, Chris Wage has already done that uh, okay. over without microwave, but I guess that is at uh, lower field at X band or Q band. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I think you're right. There is a possibility. There is one last question, which is more futuristic okay. question. Uh, do you think these systems can be used as qubits for nuclear hyperpolarization uh -huh. instead of hyperpolarization? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that is. Uh... Also, uh, we are very much uh, related to our interest. So, yeah, thank you for the uh, question. And uh, the triplet actually has the relatively long uh, T two coherence time, even at room temperature. So it can go beyond microsecond. So uh, usually. Um, it, and it's one of the longest, it can, it can give you the one of the longest, uh, T2 among the examined, you know, molecular systems. So it, and also in addition to that, you know, uh, long coherence time, it can be also initialized at room temperature. So that is also the very big advantage. So, um, so the, uh, if you want to initialize the system with the, no, the thermal electron spins, you need, basically, you need to cool down the system to have the high polarization. But uh, for the triplet or photo excited systems, you can initialize even at room temperature and uh, polarization, uh, you know, the coherence time is also relatively long. So I think it's, uh, it's very, uh, very promising, at least for some specific, uh, quantum applications and, uh, Ashif already, you know, this is a very nice system, such a, you know, 
uh, not only triped, but also triped radical or some, you know, uh, more advanced uh, or hybridized system uh, can be also uh, very useful for the, uh, to utilize, the, you know, the ability of triped to make the polarization and maybe the radical, and it can be stored in the radical with even longer coherence time. That's also, I think that's a very promising direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One very last question. So Harpreet yeah. Singh wants to confirm, what's the typical lifetime, polarization lifetime in pentacene? Okay. Actually, uh, pentacene is a bit unique system because uh, uh, it's, uh, lifetime is uh, uh, about this, you know, uh, 20 or 100 microseconds, but actually this is, it's the, almost uh, limited by the uh, deactivation from this T0 to the ground state. So, um, so the lifetime, the, the short answer is about 20 microseconds or so. And uh, pen, in case of pentasen, uh, after 20 microseconds or so, it deactivate to the ground state. So, but in for other Miracle, usually spin detection time is shorter than the deactivation or triped lifetime. So after, you know, relaxation, uh, triped stays as a paramagnetic uh, electron spins for some time, like a porphyry. But uh, in case of pentasen, uh, after, you know, this spin detection, it actually goes back to the ground state, yes.